Welcome back to the Manage to Win podcast. I'm your host, David Russell. Today's episode is sponsored by Habitly.com. We're actually going to talk about domain names in this podcast, and you don't want to miss it, but Habitly.com used to be DaveStarmSchool.com. Uh, we teach soft skills. We teach the habits of highly successful people, and that's why it's Habitly. You want to make it a habit, how you behave so you can be your best personally and professionally. Check out Habitly.com. First seven days are free. You can't go wrong. Today's episode is with Andrew Rosner. He's the co-founder and CEO of MediaOptions.com. This is the domain name guru. He has done more domain names than anybody in the world as the largest domain name brokerage company in the world. He's also an entrepreneur, investor in many other enterprises. We talk domain names, intellectual property today. This is fabulous. Let's dive in so you can learn this information. It can really help your organization. Andrew, I'm honored to have you on the show, uh, but the audience doesn't know you. So why don't you give a little bit on your background and what you're doing today, and let's dive into this conversation. Yeah, so uh, happy to be here, first off. Uh, thank you. Um, my, I'm a man of uh, uh, many talents, uh, I suppose, and I wear a lot of hats. But uh, my core business is, is Media Options, uh, MediaOptions.com, and we are the number one domain brokerage firm in the world. And uh, we basically help the world's leading companies and uh, venture-backed startups to obtain their exact brand match .com domain names and, uh, and help educating companies about why those domain names are so important for their company and, um, you know, helping educate them that, you know, these are not arbitrary uh, valuations and that these are, you know, basically this is the new digital real estate, right? This is, if you think about a legacy, you know, the legacy commerce, uh, you had to have a storefront, right? You needed an office for people to come to your employees, or you needed a storefront in order for your customers to come to. Uh, but it was, you know, the foundation of a business uh, in the legacy uh, commerce was a physical store. And today, the foundation of digital commerce is a domain name. And uh, we say all roads lead to domains. And so that's basically what I do. And from that, you know, we do a little bit in venture capital. We do a little bit in, um, or quite a bit in the, in, in the cryptocurrency space and NFTs. And um, I've got a whole bunch of other things. But um, I, uh, I, I would say, you know, I'm a domain, I'm a domain name uh, guru. Okay, okay. I thought you were going to say domain name junkie there for a moment, and I didn't think that. Well, was, I'm, uh... I'm, 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 I could say many things. I'm a domain <laughs> name junkie. I'm a domain name guru. I'm a Sherpa. I'm a, you know, uh, uh, you name it. But I mean, you've had like uh, you've either owned or been involved in the transaction in some of the biggest domain names in the world, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So my journey in domain names started in about 1996, um, and you know, at that time, I was buying domains because I'm hyperactive and had, you know, every time I had a, a an idea for you know a lot of business ideas, um, but also just hobbies, uh, I would go out and buy a domain for that. I you know I was. Uh, I, I suppose I had the luck uh, that I was learning. I was in college and learning about the consumer internet at the emergence of the consumer internet in the you know in the nineties, and um, uh, and because of that, I uh, you know it was it was very front of mind. And so before people were really aware of what the opportunity on the internet was, I was thinking about you know how to put up websites and get people across the world to come and see it. And um, you know from there, after the dot com bubble burst. Um, uh, it was actually, you know, I, I'll, I'll save you the story, but there was a, you know, it's a pretty funny story of how I really came to understand because none of that was, you know, none of that domain purchasing or acquiring was done speculatively. I had no intention or even concept of selling these things. Um, there was, you know, these were not considered assets. There was no, you know, market. There still is not a lot of liquidity for them. And, um, Certainly, nobody knew what they were worth, and so uh, it wasn't until actually after the dot com bubble burst, and you know, a certain uh, percentage of the world was sort of thought the internet was a fad, and companies, you know, blew up during the dot com phase, and a lot of them had good dot com domain names that were acquired in the mid or late nineties, and a lot of those came back to the market, and and that was when I sort of backed up the truck and said, "Ooh, I want to get a lot more of these," 
And so it was actually wave two is when I really started to build my portfolio in a meaningful way. And then at some point it was like, well, you know, that's great. I've got all these really cool domains and I believe they're really valuable. Uh, but it, you know, there was really no market. There was no, uh, there was no nothing. And so I, I launched a domain brokerage firm a few years later, uh, you know, what is now media options. Um, and, uh, you know, playing matchmaker between the people that had all these great domain names and the people that needed them, or at least I believe that they needed them, even if they didn't. And, uh, <laughs> and so it was, it was an uphill battle, man. Believe me, like, uh, you know, the first 10 years of that was, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, I don't need that. You're out of your mind. I'm never going to pay that. Bop, 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 right. And, um, you know, there are a lot of objections. First, it was, you know, I don't need this. We've got social media. Then I don't need this. We've got apps. I don't need this, you know, for whatever reason. And then, you know, what I learned over time, like, like people who stick with anything is that, you know, it, it, people come around, the market, market comes around. And so, um, you know, I've had that, uh, that benefit of time and, uh, the market has come around and today there's multi-billion dollar industry to say the least. Um, and it, truly the foundation of the entire digital economy. Uh, so uh yeah we've helped you know elon musk to acquire x.com we've gotten you know he sold prime.com to amazon tube.com to amazon uh podcast.com to amazon um we've you know rh.com to restoration hardware dx.com to deal extreme you know you name it i you know the list goes on and on we're we are recording this currently on zoom zoom.com was mine um you know, you name it. We've got quite yeah. a large market share in in high value domain transactions, and so yeah, you can trace us back, uh, trace back most of the sort of household big one word dot com domains, you know, uh, or two letters or three letters to uh, to our firm. So I I hate to go uh, into elementary basics, you know, with you, but for our entrepreneurs that are listening or people in business, mm -hmm. and they have a domain. Um, you know, what's a, what's kind of a yellow flag, red flag that they have the wrong domain name. It's, it's mm -hmm. too long. It has a dash. It doesn't have a dot com. I don't know what the parameters are. You know, really my, my thinking on this has evolved over the years, right? So I used to be sort of this maximalist of like, if you don't have your exact brand match.com, then, you know, you don't know what you're doing. And, and, and now my view of that, I, I still believe that to an extent, but I think that that misses one nuance and that is time. And so I think that, you know, there's a certain time for certain domains, right? If you are a first time entrepreneur, there's absolutely no way, unless you are, you know, born with a silver spoon in your hand, uh, that you're going to have your exact brand match.com domain name on day one of launching your company. And in most cases, nor should you. In most cases, you should figure out if you've got a business that's going to have a product market fit, you should figure out a business that can, you know, get on a growth trajectory or profitability imagine that and uh once you've done that once you've scaled the business to some extent once you've raised some further capital or you become profitable and you aren't you know scrapping for every single dollar every day wondering if your doors are going to close and i've been there i've watched many many companies and not all of them have been successful in fact i would probably most of them weren't and you know that's not a position in which you want to be going out and overextending yourself buying a very high value domain name. Um, however, once you've found product market fit, once investors want to give you money, once you reach profitability, once you are at any of those stages or others uh, where you are no longer, you know, facing that struggle, the struggle never really ends, but you know, you're not looking at imminent death every single day that you come to the office. Um, that is when to start thinking about upgrading your domain name. And the reasons for that are numerous and they vary depending on the type of business you are. They, it, it, for example, it is far more important to really own your exact brand match.com domain name. If you are a consumer facing business, if you're a B2B business, I would argue it is still important, but maybe not as important. Maybe the valuation is going to be lower. Um, now, if you are a financial institution, uh, if you are a uh, medical corporation, uh, if you are dealing with sensitive data, sensitive uh, 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 you know, information and, and, and money, 
Um, and you are subject to spoofing, subject to, um, uh, you know, all the different various types of, you know, spear phishing and phishing campaigns, spoofing, all, all the different ways that people try to uh, misrepresent your company and utilize that for, you know, malevolence, um, then it is quite important, whether you're consumer facing or not, to own your .com domain name. And, uh, you know, that comes down to email security, data security, trust, right? And and those things extrapolate out also to the retail end, right? So it's like, you know, um, there is an inherent trust that is, this has been proven through studies from Microsoft, studies from um, uh, Stanford had done a, a, a pretty interesting study at some point. But um, if, just as a very rudimentary example, if you are going out looking for kitchen cabinets, okay, most people do not, ha- they, they, most people could not rattle off a brand of kitchen cabinets. You know, you suddenly decide you need kitchen cabinets. Uh, well, you know, I, I I couldn't tell you a brand of kitchen cabinets, right? And so I go to Google and I Google cabinets or kitchen cabinets, right? And in that case, uh, somebody that owns cabinets.com or kitchencabinets.com is going to have a tremendous advantage because your company name, your website name, or even if that's not your brand name, that is a... Uh, a, a commercial website that you possess, uh, you are exactly matching the intent of the search of the consumer. And that match of intent translates into higher conversion rates, uh, higher click-through rates, you know, what have you. And if you can increase click-through rates and increase conversion rates, well, then you have measurable uh, uh improvement. And if you have measurable improvement, you can extrapolate that out and discover the value, right? And so um, there are endless numbers of ways uh, and and reasons why it is very, very important to have that. You don't want to go around calling yourself Pegasus if you don't own Pegasus.com, because that's not where your customers are going to find you. Trillions, trillions of dollars have been spent over the last 30 years ingraining .com into the minds of consumers. And so if I tell you, uh, you know, my, my company's name is Pegasus, you are going to go home. And if you are curious about what I do or curious about what I've told you I do, uh, you're going to go home and just inherently, you're going to assume that my company's at Pegasus.com in the same way that Apple can tell you that, you know, um, you don't need to say the .com because you're just Apple, right? Um, and Amazon is just Amazon because they own Amazon.com. But if they didn't own Amazon.com, then they wouldn't be Amazon. They would be something else. They would be try Amazon or get Amazon or buy Amazon or buy on Amazon or Amazon.net or Amazon.co or Amazon.io or dot whatever, right? That would be their brand. And so I think one of the big mistakes, if I can extrapolate your question out a little bit further, um, one of the mistakes that people make, um, particularly in small, medium-sized businesses, is to make the assumption that they can use a secondary domain name and call themselves the simplified version, right? Call it, I don't know, uh, Compass, okay? Uh, there's only one Compass.com, and that's the only company that gets to call themselves Compass. If you are Compass.io, well, then you should lean in I'm not going to tell you that compass.io is a terrible domain name. It is certainly inferior to .com. But if you lean into compass.io and you include the .io into your brand name, well, that can be a useful brand. You can you can be compass.io, but don't go yeah. around saying that you're just compass because you're going to cause consumer confusion. Yeah, I, I think it makes perfect sense. And the other thing that I think you're alluding to but you didn't mention, so correct me if I'm wrong, is mm-hmm. it like with the kitchencabinets.com? Mm-hmm. So I may not name my business kitchencabinets.com, mm-hmm. but I could say, we do kitchen cabinets. Our name is whatever. And you can find us on kitchencabinets.com mm-hmm. or just, and it, it links to what, you know, the primary site is because that's going to be easier for somebody to remember than the name of our company is Tom, Dick and Harry Inc- Incorporated. So, Absolutely. You know, type of thing. So there's, so there's that thing too, is to consider not only what the direct name is with your company, but 
what are people searching on? If you can get those domains, that could have high value. Am I right? Every, yeah, one hundred percent. I will expand on that a little bit if, if you if you uh, let me. Um, the everything is cyclical, right? And so you know, in the early two thousands, um, these sort of exact brand, not sorry, exact product matches, exact service match domains. You know, uh, homeloans.com, uh, newyorkmortgages.com, right? Th- these were all the rage, primarily for SEO purposes, in order to get to the top of Google. Google sort of done away with a lot of the benefit of using those exact match keyword domains um, from an SEO perspective. There is still quite a bit of SEO benefit from using those, um, but for different reasons. It's mostly about because of the anchor text. If you're exact, if you're you know, website is New York home loans. Well, then, you know, the anchor text, uh, linking back to your website, which is New York home loans.com is going to be New York home loans. And that's going to have a tremendous amount of benefit, right? So there's all these sort of backdoor ways. It's are still quite beneficial, but leaving that aside, because it's not really particularly relevant anymore. What is beneficial and what is sort of the, the, the nuanced about this is that if you are, uh, let's say you sell laptops, okay? Owning laptops.com isn't going to do you a lot of good because every consumer buying a laptop already knows it's either Apple or Acer or, you know, Google or it, it, these are, these are, you know, the, the brands are known, you know, there's five or 10 that people are going to choose from. Everybody's already got a preference for the most part, you know, and so what are you going to do? You know, you're going to be a comparison site. Like it, it doesn't really matter, right? But if you're in a product where there are no household names, then having that exact keyword match.com domain name is tremendously beneficial, right? Uh, for the exact reasons that you just specified. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And going back to one of your earlier comments that, hey, if, if you're just starting out or you're getting your first domain name, whatever, you don't want to pay the big bucks. Uh, we actually did that. We had we did we have soft skills training, and originally it was Dave's Charm School for IT geeks. So it's Dave's Charm School dot com, and it was available. Obviously, it's a long name. You know why wouldn't it be available? But about yeah. a little over a year ago, we we're like, hey, we validated this. We want to take it to the next level, and we paid some good money to get mm-hmm. habitly dot com mm-hmm. because that was simpler. It spoke to people, easy to say. It was unique. Rebranded mm-hmm. everything. And, um, you know, it was a very positive way for us to go. And we also looked at, are there other URLs we want, you know, mm-hmm. that can, can link in type of thing. Mm-hmm. What, um, you're bringing up great points that people need to be aware of. And absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is really important. What are other things that you've seen? I mean, you're like, you are the guru here. Um, what are the things you've seen that you think people overlook that they need to be aware of when they're thinking about? Do I need to upgrade my domain name? Do I need to get a new one? Should I rename my company? Because that's one of the things you're kind of bringing up too. Yeah, those are, you know, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with the last question first. Uh, in When you're asking yourself, do I need to, uh, you know, change, basically rebrand? Um, there's a lot to think about. Rebranding is very risky, okay? Um, it's risky from an SEO standpoint. You've built up, you know, backlinks. You've built up you know, content that is indexed um, and transitioning that to a new domain name uh, and a new website can be risky. Um, If executed well, no problem, but there are a lot of ways to not execute it well. And I've seen some some real horror stories. Um, However, that being said, I tell companies this all the time, early stage startups who have big ambitions. If you're like, if you're trying to build a $10 million company, and, you know, you're very happy with that. Uh, and, you know, you're going to be a small company for the rest of your existence. Um, and that's your plan. That's your ambition. Then you don't need, a, a, you know, a $500,000 domain name or a million dollar domain name. You're probably fine with what you've got. But if you plan to be a multi hundred million dollar company, if you plan to be a unicorn, a billion dollar plus company, if you want to be a household name, you don't have a choice. Like, it, 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 I, I don't think people get how important that is. You, you simply, there will come a time. I've been doing this for 30 years. 
I, I've seen this over and over and over again. And people let their egos get in the way and they think, well, we are X and it doesn't matter. People will Google us and they'll find us. Well, that may be true until a point. And that point will come in my experience. And what happens is that somebody else buys a domain name and then somebody else is now, you know, X, except that they've got X.com and you don't. And so you are no longer X. And what will happen is that your brand will fade off into obsolescence. No matter if you want to build a big company, you will find that if you don't own your exact brandmatch.com domain name, you will hit a ceiling. There will come a time when you will hit a ceiling. And that ceiling will be enforced by your VC, uh, you know, venture capitalist. That ceiling will be in, uh, enforced by a banker if you're trying to go public. That uh, for a very simple example, even Facebook, right? Who did own Facebook.com and the Facebook.com. When they went to go public, um, their bankers literally told them, uh, this was about maybe a month before the the, the, the IPO um, or before the announcement of the IPO, I forget. Um, but uh, about a month before, they literally said, you have to go get out and get FB.com. And they didn't leave them a choice. And so Facebook had to go out and, and, and specifically because they, you know, all of these people, the lawyers, the bankers, the VCs, all the stakeholders are going to say, you absolutely unequivocally must have 100% control of all of your intellectual property. And the reason for that is that any lack of control is another disclosure that needs to be made at the IPO, right? And it's another risk factor. And so they were forced to go out and get FB.com, which they had to buy from the American Farm Bureau. And I believe they paid $8 million for it. Um, you know, last minute, you know, Hail Mary, they had to get it. It wasn't an option. And so um, this is something that happens all the time. And so if you uh, have ambitions of build, building a big company, the sooner you get your exact brand match.com domain name, that rebrand or that transition to the new domain name will have less risk. The bigger you are, the bigger the risk, right? We kind of use that as a rough uh, calculation. On average, you can estimate about a four to $10,000 per employee transition cost, um, risk adjusted um, for a rebrand, okay? So that, that, that's actually a pretty useful figure for people to keep in mind. Uh, four to 10 grand is about what you should expect as a risk adjusted cost of transition to a new domain name. And um, I guess that's a you know fairly complete answer to, the, to, to that last question. Um, so the other one, you had, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it, it, well, I hate to interrupt you because you're on a roll, but it, it, so I think, but I wanted to call out to the audience something that you live and breathe that they may not have caught mm -hmm. is thinking of owning all their, that part of their intellectual property mm -hmm. is protecting how someone might use their company name mm -hmm. in a domain. So I think that, um, so that is a wide moat uh, or, or wide uh, uh, river to cross there, right? So um, there's a lot of aspects to protecting your intellectual property as it pertains to domain names. Um, there is, let's say, people who are directly infringing on your domain names, right? And if you don't own um, all of those, let's say, viable and meaningful uh, alternatives to your to your domain name, then people will ultimately own them and potentially squat on them and potentially do things that could be harmful to your brand and cause consumer confusion. There are ways to deal with that. Uh, there's a process called the UD UDRP. If somebody is knowingly uh, in possession of and infringing on your trademark in a way, in a meaningful way, um, you can file a UDRP complaint, which is a uniform dispute resolution uh, process. Um, and it costs, you know, about two, three grand to file it and maybe another three to five grand in legal fees. But you and it might take four to six months, but you will ultimately get those domain names, assuming that that person is, in fact, infringing. Um, uh, perhaps. You know, more importantly, though, and, and, a, and a common mistake that I see is, again, people letting their ego get in the way. It's like you make this assumption. I've spent and, and I understand it. Right. I, I, I've been there. You put your blood, your sweat and the tears into building a business. That business has a name in your world, in your bubble, in your universe. You are that name. Right. There, there is no nobody else matters. But the, but the universe is big and there are other people out there. And there are a lot of different commercial classes. And so I think, you know, um, no fault of their own, but many entrepreneurs I encounter on a 
virtually daily basis, have this false idea that, oh, I've got a trademark for, I don't know, let's just say, uh, um, I don't know. Kitchen cabinets. Kitchen cabinets. All right. <laughs> uh, let's say, let's say cabinets. Let's say cabinets just to, 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 for a better example. So you've got a trademark for cabinets and let's say you do software and, you know, the way you're thinking about cabinets is like, you know, these little boxes of data, right? And, and you know, you've, you, as far as you, your cabinets.com, you know, bang on, you've got the trademarks, you built a company, you just raised money, you got a billion dollar valuation, you're feeling great. But your cabinets.io or your cabinets dot whatever, or you've got try cabinets, get cabinets, you know, you know, whatever. Okay. But you're not cabinets.com. Well, you think, all right, I'm in a position of leverage. I've got the trademark. I've built a billion dollar company. I'm going to go out and get cabinets.com. That guy can't sell it to anybody else because we've got the trademark and where they, what they're missing is that there are an infinite number of categories and classes in which these trademarks apply. And trademarks are both geographically specific, meaning within a certain country uh, or even state, uh, and they are also category specific or class specific. And so your trademark is very specific to data or to software as a service or to whatever it might be. And maybe you do five or 10 things. Great. And you got all those trademarks. Well, then there's a guy out here who's literally a carpenter and he's been operating on cabinets.com for whatever number of years, or maybe he's not doing anything with it whatsoever and it's just his email address. But you have absolutely unequivocally zero right to that domain name. You have no leverage. He has all the leverage. He owns the domain name. And the only reason you're going to have any leverage is if he can't pay his bills and he needs money. But you have no rights to that domain name. Right? And this isn't a great example because cabinets is so generic, but it could be something like White Cloud. It could be something like Red Apple, right? Red Apple is a great example. Actually, we own redapple.com, right? And there's all sorts of companies called Red Apple, right? And all of them have trademarks for their respective businesses. But none of them have a universal trademark for every category of business. And so none of them have an exclusive right to use red apple in fact apple the company that we all know and sometimes love uh also doesn't have a universal exclusive right despite the fact that they are basically involved in everything these days from trying to manufacture a car to your laptop to your phone to artificial intelligence and augmented reality you name it they're in it uh they only have trademarks for very specific categories and classes of products to operate operate under Apple. There are actually several famous cases of, uh, there's even, I think, a UK company that was like a computer service company. They literally fixed people's computers. Uh, it was called Apple long before they were. And uh, they, uh, I believe, I, I don't remember the details, they uh, even won a lawsuit against Apple uh, for infringing on their trademark. And so, um, you know, I, I think that is an important thing for that, that, that a lot of entrepreneurs overlook. Um, you know, your trademark and your rights apply to a very specific geography and class of products or services. All right. Well, Andrew, I mean, I mean it sounds like you're just getting on a roll. But, if, <laughs> you know, if, if, if this has really sparked someone's interest in learning more and, and mm -hmm. challenge them that, uh oh, maybe we're not doing enough. Um, is, is your company media options, you know, uh, do they, do you guys advise people on these different things or do you kind of just post things We do for sale? Okay. No, nope, so, absolutely. So, uh, our, our primary business is actually, uh, helping companies to acquire the domain names that they want or need. Um, and, uh, we are at mediaoptions.com. We are fairly active on Twitter at, at media options. And, uh, yes, we do lots of consulting and, uh, we only get paid when successful. And so absolutely no harm and no cost to reaching out and uh, asking questions. Well, I, I love what you brought up about the intellectual property and that don't just look at what's in front of your face. You didn't put it this way, but think about the the domain names that affect your mm -hmm. brand. And uh, so I think that's great. I want to thank you so much for being on the show. This has been fabulous.
Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in today. If you like the episode with Andrew, subscribe, leave us a comment or a rating. Always interested in your feedback. And as you just heard on the podcast, check out habitly.com. Learn those soft skills. Learn how to write emails better. Quite frankly, that's an episode we just launched is a quick study, five minutes, how to improve the way you write email, or maybe you want to pass that on to one of your coworkers. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay tuned in. we got more great guests coming. Bye for now.